Hey friends, I'm here to talk about Prager U's role in spreading bad science and creationist ideas. My title is not to imply that it is only a creationist propaganda organ. That's just one of its many roles. It also spreads bad economics, bad politics, bad history, bad you name it. And all you have to do is search for Prager U response videos to see all that on display. I'm just going to focus on one aspect of Prager U that happens to fall inside my wheelhouse. First, I have to point out the obvious, as everyone must. Prager U is not a university. It is not accredited. There is no learning going on at Prager U. It is a right-wing propaganda mill that superficially and poorly mimics a university in the shallowest way possible by calling itself one. It's just a YouTube channel with pretensions and money, lots of money. So there's a whole list of oil industry affiliated people that are backing it. But main point to take away here is the organization has a $10 million annual budget of which it spends more than 40% on marketing. It's a shill for the oil industry and conservative religious views, nothing more. Dennis Prager himself has no significant credentials at all. He has an undergraduate degree in history, which is the beginnings of an intellectual career, but he dropped out of grad school to become what he is now, an AM talk radio show host, which is the antithesis of credibility. He's a conservative babbler of the same ilk as Alex Jones, Rush Limbaugh, and Glenn Beck. He became a promoter of creationism when he was impressed by the intelligent design creationist Stephen Meyer. Meyer, who is not a scientist by any stretch of the imagination, told him that there were scientific reasons to reject evolution. There aren't. And Prager believed him. He claims that evolution has become less and less tenable, not for religious reasons, but for scientific reasons, to endorse evolution as it is generally taught. Uh, that's nonsense. This is coming from the Discovery Institute, which we know is a religious organization that hides its religion. So that that's just wrong. I guess Prager found it convincing, though. He's easily persuaded by creationists. So Prager U is a facade put up by an unqualified fraud backed by oil industry money grippers, I mean rich guys, which throws bad information on the internet that is readily gobble, gobbled up by millions of undiscriminating viewers. It has 2 million subscribers. And I'm going to talk about two examples of bad creationist crap. Note, one of the things PragerU doesn't do is actually talk about the evidence for evolution. Nobody affiliated with them is competent to do so. All they can do is insist that there is a creator God and make poor arguments for that. So, first, there's a video titled... Does science argue for or against God from some guy named Eric Metaxas? I have no idea who he is, so I'll just go straight to his damn fool claim that there is scientific evidence for a God. He makes two arguments, and they're both interrelated and bogus, but I'll take them apart one at a time. The first argument he makes is that the search for extraterrestrial intelligence overestimated the likelihood of finding a signal. I actually agree with him on that fact. But if you're hoping for any relevance to the existence of a creator god, keep on dreaming. Given the roughly octillion planets in the universe, that's one followed by 24 zeros, there should have been about septillion planets, that's one followed by 21 zeros, capable of supporting life. I have to stop him there. One of the few resources cited in this video is an article by Peter Schenkel, in which Schenkel admits that they were too optimistic in the early years of SETI. In this article, Schenkel explains exactly what they expected. He says that they estimated between 10,000 and 10 million extraterrestrial civilizations, or on the order of 10 to the 6, and that they'd be several hundred light years apart. Again, I agree, that's too optimistic. But note that an estimate of 1 million is about 18 orders of magnitude less than Metaxas's claim of an octillion. It's a small thing, but it's a bad sign when you misrepresent the numbers in a source right in front of your face by that much. With such spectacular odds, scientists were optimistic that the search for extraterrestrial intelligence, known by its initials SETI, an ambitious project launched in the 1960s, was sure to turn up something soon. With a vast radio telescopic network, scientists listened for signals that resembled coded intelligence. But as the years passed, the silence from the universe 
was deafening. As of 2014, researchers have discovered precisely bubkis, nada, zilch, which is to say zero, followed by an infinite number of zeros. And, yes, what Metaxas is trying to argue is that SETI hasn't found any intelligent aliens, therefore creator God. And further, that because some scientists made excessive claims of the feasibility of SETI, that therefore science itself suggests that we can't be the product of random forces. He then goes on to say that there are a lot of reasons why the earlier estimates were so optimistic, as if somehow that makes his point for him. There are more than 200 known parameters necessary for a planet to support life, every single one of which must be perfectly met or the whole thing falls apart. For example, without a massive, gravity-rich planet like Jupiter nearby to draw away asteroids, Earth would be more like an interstellar dartboard than the verdant orb that it is. Simply put, the odds against life in the universe are astonishing. Yet, here we are, not only existing, but talking about existing. What can account for it? Can every one of those many parameters have been perfectly met by accident? At what point is it fair to admit that it is science itself that suggests that we cannot be the result of random forces? His claim that every parameter has to be met perfectly is simply false. There's a lot of slop in each one, and again, he is misrepresenting the SETI argument. But what a lovely non sequitur, and a nice example of the fallacy of the excluded middle to say that science itself suggests that we cannot be the result of random forces. He makes a big deal of scientific explanations for why intelligent life should be rare, but he fails to appreciate that each of those 200 factors that contribute to that rarity represent alternative natural hypotheses as to why we aren't up to our eyeballs and the aliens. Each of those factors is an alternative explanation to his God hypothesis, and he just skips right over them to leap to his desired conclusion, a creator God. He also fails to note another important point. The rarity of intelligent life is not a required consequence of either evolutionary theory or of religious apologetics. If little green men showed up in a flying saucer, would Metaxas or Dennis Prager or anyone throw up their hands and say, well, that settles it. I'm an atheist. I don't think so. It is not a prerequisite of Christianity that the universe be mostly empty. In a similar situation, would any atheist see an alien and suddenly declare the conversion to religious belief? Nope. We can be agnostic about the ubiquity of alien life. Evolutionary bi biology, likewise, doesn't have any equation that hinges on then a UFO landed. What he's doing is leading up to his second non sequitur. Doesn't assuming that an intelligence created these perfect conditions in fact require far less faith than believing that a life-sustaining Earth just happened to beat the inconceivable odds? Shorter, Eric Metaxas. Life is improbable, therefore creator God. Nonsense again. Nothing he says makes the existence of an intelligence that created the universe more likely. His entire argument completely ignores any consideration of the probability of a cosmic intelligence. So how can he say that that is more probable than that the universe is a chance event? It doesn't make any sense. The probability of an event is not necessarily a product of the mechanism of that event. When someone wins a lottery, that is not a miracle. We don't have to assume that an intelligent agent must have rigged the result. I have three children, and each one is unique and unusual with their own combination of traits. I know how they got there. I watch them through each step of their development, and I don't need to invoke a deity for any of it. Each world in our universe will be similarly unique and unusual. I don't need design to explain that. Just chance. Intelligent life may be a rarity requiring an unlikely set of circumstances. That is compatible with a natural explanation, just as it might be compatible with a supernatural explanation. I will also point out that theological explanations also do not require the inevitability of sentient beings or the absence of the same. This is another observation that does not discriminate between alternative hypotheses. The second video from PragerU is even more easily dismissible. It's titled, 
Does God exist? Four new arguments from some guy named Frank Pastore, claiming to have four new arguments for God. He doesn't. It's simply Pastore reciting four phenomena in the history of the universe, attaching the phrase Big Bang to them, and announcing that he doesn't understand them. This isn't four, it's one, and it's dumber than you might think. He's simply saying, I don't understand, therefore creator God. But I'll give him a chance. Let's hear him trivialize the cosmological origin of the universe. First theoretical cosmological Big Bang? Well, it only yields matter and energy. It doesn't even begin to address the origin of life. No, really, only matter and energy. He also argues that the Big Bang only created light elements like hydrogen and helium, and that heavier elements required billions of years of nucleosynthesis inside of stars to be created, as if that is somehow some kind of devastating rebuttal to the idea of the Big Bang. But that's not enough for him. He has to invent three other Big Bangs, the origin of life, the origin of humans, and the origin of self-awareness. And again, you must understand these problems require bangs. I mean, sudden binary pops into existence, since there's no evidence for any gradual development in any of these. So I, like you, have a choice. It's either faith in these four big bangs of somethings from nothings to account for what we see all around us, or faith in some kind of creator God behind it all. He calls them bangs because they involve sudden binary pops into existence, since there's no evidence for any gradual development of any of these. I'll grant him the cosmological Big Bang. I don't know what happened to trigger that event, but I think I'll wait for a physicist to explain it rather than a former baseball player. But even there, he himself mentioned the process of stellar evolution that followed, which counts as the gradual development of the matter of the universe. But the other three, of course we have an understanding of mechanisms and transitions. And further, it's another fallacy of the excluded middle, we don't have only two possibilities, his idiot mangling of scientific explanations versus there must be a creator God. It's just absurdity all the way through. I also just about fell off my chair at this particular raging bit of stupidity. We still don't have a way to account for the great diversity of life forms. I mean, the huge differences between bacteria, plants, and animals. Nor do we have a way to account for the differences between man and animal. We still don't have an anthropology at this point. Yes. Yes, we do have an explanation for the diversity of life on Earth. It's called evolution. Evolution actually does a really good job of explaining diversity. Pastore's only defenses of, of his position consists of denial of what we do know and declaring that what he doesn't know is definitive. It's the kind of appalling garbage I'd expect from a creationist and it passes without question at PragerU. So it's just another dumbass creationist channel, but there's a difference. It's popular with the so-called intellectual dark web and people who associate with that group of regressive re reactionaries. The intersection of the IDW with Dennis Prager is a little weird. So, Ian Hersey Ali, James Damore, Jordan Peterson, Dave Rubin, Ben Shapiro, and Christina Hoff Summers have all made videos for PragerU, without a moment's qualm that they are propping up a bullshit organization of creationist dorks. Jonathan Haidt and Sam Harris have so far resisted the siren call of a creationist organization with a $10 million budget, but they have appeared on Prager's AM talk radio show. Most of them, I think, don't support the kind of anti-science nonsense promulgated by Prager. They have their own brands of BS they're spreading. So what we're seeing here is more mainstreaming of bogus superstition by a group of people who are mainly interested in pushing conservative points of view. Prager U is a gateway to a whole collection of crank beliefs. Dennis Prager is simply a fool with a microphone, a loudmouth who holds an embarrassing collection of silly ideas, and some rich people have given him a ludicrous amount of money to babble on YouTube. I can sympathize with him a little bit. If anyone wants to give me $10 million a year to express myself on the web, sure, I will take it. 
But there's no excuse for the people who are aiding and abetting him in spreading anti-scientific bullshit, especially when they're attempting to claim some kind of intellectual authority. There's also no excuse for the people who avidly watch these things, thinking they're challenging the dominant academic hegemony and all those lefty professors. They aren't. They're embarrassing themselves by capering with a clown. Oh, come on, bucko. 